What's up guys, Midnight Strike here, welcoming you back to another classic review. Now, today we're going to look at a title that isn't exactly a classic for the reasons that you may think. Now, if you just read the title as Pac-Man, you might be thinking to yourself, what, what were you talking about, Midnight Strike? It's an arcade classic. You wasted so many coins in that thing day after day that it was pretty much impossible to calculate how much you were losing on it. But then again, if you read the parentheses, you would know that I am talking about one of the many home console versions, if not the first home console version of this game, the Atari 2600 version. Now, if you've seen my previous Atari 2600 review of Asteroids, you'll know that I wasn't particularly a fan of the game system. But then again, you know, it did have a few good, good games, such as Pitfall, Pitfall 2, and to an extent Asteroids, even though I said it was an average, mediocre game. Even for the time, it was really repetitive. Um, it was still, it still had its few good games. This just wasn't one of them. So I looked up on Wikipedia a list of the worst video games of all time, or list of video games notable for negative reception. So basically, on that list, it lists all the consoles, all the games, and everything from different years. And Pac-Man was on there. I'm just thinking, what? Well, this has got to be an editing mistake or some kind of vandalism. But when I looked into it further, it said for the Atari 2600. It was a port, it had nothing to do with the main Pac-Man series, it looked completely different, felt completely different, and just, it wasn't Pac-Man. So, I decided to look into this matter for myself, and they were right. <sighs> that nothing can really describe my distaste for this game. It doesn't exactly belong in the review dumpster, per se, because it is a classic game. It's just a port. A bad port of a classic game so I'm not really gonna do that many ports I suppose but then again you know they could have done a lot better of a job on it even some of the directors have said that but then again other directors have said they did the best that they could with the time they had you know at the time basically so then again I don't really blame anyone for it it's just the fact that it was released for one of the worst systems of all time and you know not notorious for bad arcade ports and it almost caused the video game crash of 1983. It was one of the deciding factors, along with E.T. and the plethora of really bad, really horrendous, repetitive games that you could barely understand where you were going. So it's not like it's ahead of its time, more like, you know, maybe 20 years behind its time. It was pretty bad. So when you think of Pac-Man, what do you think of? You think of vibrant colors, you think of going to an arcade, wasting a few coins, you know, if not like five or ten dollars on that thing. I mean, just to get that high score, you think of the fruit and the ghosts and all their names, you know, coming up, the cool animation cutscene in the beginning where Pac-Man eats all the pellets and he gets the power pellet and then he can eat the and then he can eat the ghost, eats the ghost. But anyways, none of that is in this game. This is basically a stripped down version of Pac-Man with really bad graphics, and I mean horrendously bad. I mean this doesn't even look like Pac-Man at all. It is a two colors, and it is uh, blue with like a yellow background, and Pac-Man is yellow. And the animation of his face, of Pac-Man's face, doesn't change when you're going up. It doesn't change direction. It's just like he's just eating the things. I mean, it was relatively easy to program, I suppose. But when I actually played it for myself, it wasn't as bad as what people were saying. But I would assume that they were on later levels. So... When you get to later levels, I looked at, actually looked this up as well, when you get to later levels, the ghosts start going faster and faster, so it's, you know, fast enough where the Atari 2600 cannot process all of this power, so they just take turns flickering. The ghosts take turns flickering, you can't, dis you can't see where any ghosts are. Pretty soon, once you get to one of the, you know, the further levels, there's only one ghost no, there's many ghosts, but it seems like there's one ghost, but the rest are invisible because they keep flickering back and forth. So you can only see about one or two, you know, at a time. <laughs> Once you get further down, you can only see one at a time, rendering this game basically unplayable. But then again, I digress, as in the original version, you couldn't get past level 256. But, you know, who really cares about that because who's going to make it that far anyways? I mean, maybe if you're a record breaker, maybe if you are you know, really bored with your time, or really good at the game, I personally am not really that good at Pac-Man, so I, I confess. I like Pac-Man Arrangement, but then again, you basically get infinite lives on that. So Pac-Man is a game, like I said, it was released on many different systems, pretty much every single system that you can think of, with the exception of the PS4 and Xbox One and uh, Wii U. So, you know, they just came out. So I would imagine that, you know, pretty soon 
down the line, they're going to get this game in an arcade port or an arcade pack. So, of course, that's going to be better than this game because this game is just... Uh, I mean, I played it for, like, maybe five minutes before, you know, really just getting kind of frustrated with how it looked, how it felt, the sounds, and it's just... When you begin the sound... When you begin the game, right, it makes this really ear-shattering noise for the da 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 you know, like that. But it's just, it's not the same. And it doesn't sound the same. It's it's ear-shattering, it's annoying, and just the, the sound of Pac-Man eating the pellets just sounds like this, you know, hitting a tin can a little bit. So, if you want to get a good retro Pac-Man game, I would suggest this one. Yes, this is Pac-Man for the NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System. Well, it's not as good as the arcade edition per se, it's just up there. It's right up there with your 8-bit sound and glory. It's a really good version of Pac-Man. And right there, see, it's even got Pac-Man running away from the ghosts by Tangan. Pretty good developer, game developers. They actually did a port of, uh, what's the, Afterburner. That's what it was. I was going to say, like, Ar Arcadia or something like that, but it's Afterburner. The game where you are on a 3D plane in a ship or a starship, and just going forward and destroying a bunch of things. So they did that on the NES. So, great game for the NES, but for the Atari 2600, no, 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 no. It's unplayable. It doesn't, re <laughs> doesn't remind anyone of the actual arcade version or the NES version, per se, but it's just not a good version at all. It's, re it's practically unplayable, so I'm going to give it probably a 2 out of 10. And the 2 is for being... You know, a little bit innovative because it has the fruit. It has basically, you know, the bare bones of everything. So I'll give it a 2 out of 10. So with that, this is Midnight Strike 3625. Stay away from this game, or at least this version of the game. Keep calm and rock on.